Hi friends, welcome back to our YouTube channel. Today we have to discuss about auxiliary memory in computer architecture course, computer organization course, computer organization and architecture course. Auxiliary memory can also be called as secondary memory. The most commonly used auxiliary memory devices that are used in the computer system are magnetic disk and magnetic tape. Hence, we can say that magnetic disk and magnetic tape can also be called as secondary memory storage devices. First, we have to discuss about magnetic disk. And the second one we have to discuss about magnetic tape. First point in the magnetic disk. A magnetic disk is a circular plate constructed with metal or a plastic coated with magnetized material. Often both sides of the disk surface can be used to store the information. All the disks are stacked on one spindle. So here several disks are stacked on one spindle with read-write head available on each surface of the disk. All the disks are rotate together with high speed. Bits are stored on the magnetic surface in spots along the concentric circles. So this is one concentric circle, this is another concentric circle, this is another concentric circle. Okay, on the concentric circles some magnetic spots are available. In that magnetic spots we have to store the uh, binary information in the form of bits. These concentric circles can be called as tracks. Okay, so this is one concentric circle. This is another concentric circle. This is another concentric circle. Each and every concentric circle can be called as tracks. On that tracks, some magnetized material is there. On that magnetized material, some spots are there. In that spots, we have to store the binary information. Next, the tracks can be divided into some sections. That sections can be called as sectors. Okay, so this is one sector, this is another sector, this is another sector, this is another sector, this is another sector. In the sectors, we have to store the information in the records. Okay, the minimum quantity of information that can be transferred is sector. How a disk surface can be divided into tracks and the sectors that can be shown in this diagram. Every concentric circle can be called as one track. The tracks are commonly divided into some subsections. So each and every subsection can be called as sector. Every sector contains some records. In that records, we have to store the information. A read-write head is available on each surface of the disk. That means a read-write head is available on each track. Next one, a disk system can be addressed by using address bits that specifies the disk surface number, disk number, sector number, 
a track within a given sector. By using these four factors, a disk system can be addressed. Okay. Once again, I am telling a disk system can be addressed by using disk surface number. Next one, disk number. Third one is sector number. Fourth one is track number. Okay. Once the read write had positioned to a particular track, the system has to wait until the rotating disk reaches to a particular sector. Suppose we want to access a uh, particular, we want to access the data from this particular sector. First, we have to identify the track number. Next, we have to identify the sector number. Once the read write head positioned to a particular track number, the system has to wait until the rotating disk reaches to a uh, particular sector. Once the read write head positioned to a particular track and uh, reaches to a particular sector, then the information transfer can be done very fastly once it reaches the beginning of a sector. Okay. A disk system supports multiple read-write heads so that a simultaneous transfer of bits can be done from several tracks at the same time. Next point. Suppose this is one disk. This, this disk contains several number of tracks. This is another disk. It contains several number of tracks. This is another disk. It contains several number of tracks. Suppose this disk contains track number 5. This is track number 5. In this disk also, this is track number 5. In this disk also, this is track number 5. Okay. So, track number 5 of this disk, track number 5 of this disk, track number 5 of this disk forms as one cylinder. Cylinder is nothing but the same track number of a several disks can be formed as one cylinder. Next one, each and every disk can be called as plotter. Okay. Same track number of several disks can be formed as one cylinder. Each disk can be called as one platter. Each and every concentric circle can be called as track. The track can be divided into several subsections can be called as sector. All the disks are stacked one by one to this spindle. Okay, this entire a spindle can be connected to the arm assembly. So, on, on each surface of the disk, read write head is attached. Okay, so this is the read write head. All the disks that are attached to the spindle that can be rotated with high speed. Okay, this is the block diagram of magnetic disk. And this is called as arm assembly. Next one. A track within a given sector near the circumference have the larger size than the tracks near the center of the disk. So observe this one. This track is near the center of the disk that has smaller in size. This track near the circumference, so it has the larger size. 
okay the tracks near the circumference have the larger size the tracks near the center of the disc have smaller size to make all the all the records of a given sector of equal length some discs have variable recording density with higher density on the tracks that are near the center of the disc than the tracks on the near the circumference that means which tracks have the higher recording density the tracks near the center of the disc because they are smaller in size because of the reason higher recording density is available that can store more information whereas tracks near the circumference have larger density uh, larger in size so that smaller recording density is uh, available okay so the tracks near the center of the disc have smaller in size and have higher recording density so that it can store more information whereas the tracks near the center of the uh, near the circumference have larger in size that have smaller recording density because of the reason to make all the uh, to make all the tracks with equal length okay to make all the tracks with equal length for storing the information so the tracks near the center of the disc have higher recording density than the tracks near the circumference so this equalizes the number of bits on all the tracks of a given sector next one a disk system a disk have a permanently uh, a disk with permanently storage capability that can be attached to the arm assembly and it can be removed by the user occasionally that disk system can be called as hard disk okay a disk system that is permanently attached to the arm assembly unit and cannot be removed by the user occasionally that disk system can be called as hard disk a disk drive with removable disk can be called as floppy disk that means a disk drive that has only temporary storage purpose and it can be uh, removed at any time that disk system can be called as floppy disk hard disk can be used for storing large amount of information whereas floppy disk can be used for storing small amount of information hard disk is permanently attached to the arm assembly unit whereas floppy disk is temporarily attached to the uh, system okay next one we can take any storage device that contains two important properties so first one is access time second one is transfer rate access time contains two types of times first one is seek time plus transfer time okay first one is what is access time access time is nothing but the time required the average time required to reach a particular location in the memory after reaching a particular location in the memory 
we have to obtain that means we have to access that content okay access time is nothing but the time required to reach a particular location in the memory and obtain its content is nothing but access time access time is equal to seek time plus transfer time what is seek time seek time is nothing but the time required to position the read write head to a particular location in the memory so the time required to position the read write head to a particular location in the memory transfer time is nothing but the time required to transfer the data to or or from the device okay the time required to position the read write head to a particular location the time required to transfer the data to or from the device so the collection of seek time and the combination of seek time and transfer time is nothing but access time second one is transfer rate transfer rate is nothing but the number of characters or a words that can be transferred from a device within 1 second within 1 second how many number of characters or a words that can be transferred from a device once the read write head position to a particular track and a particular setter that is nothing but transfer rate these two can be called as important characteristics of any device okay next we can go for magnetic tape 